hope is gone My heart is full of sorrow I can't believe How much I've let you down I dread the pain That waits for me tomorrow When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory will take the time care for one like me but I read in the Bible that old story how he pled for my forgiveness while he was dying on a tree please need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me.
a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day And the road is rough and long Sometimes my feet gets weary And so warm But a brighter day is coming When I step on heaven's shore And I won't have to worry anymore no, I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over and I'll rest forevermore. And my said my last goodbyes I will see the Savior standing at the door and he'll say my child you're welcome all your cares are left behind and I
take the time care for one like me but I read in the Bible that old story how he pled for my forgiveness while he was dying on a tree please forgive me need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Till my dying day, help others find the way. Welcome everyone to Hickok Baptist Church on this December 12th. Christmas getting closer every day. Uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here. Well, Jeff, how about open it up in prayer? Thank our, our three new members we had this morning. They're here tonight, see? So they're supporting our church. Thank the Lord. Yeah, and we appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Lord appreciate you. Uh, Christmas uh, tonight, we have a conference meeting at the church. Uh, we're going, among other things, be presenting our budget for 2022. Uh, Christmas card to do the 15th. Children have a Christmas play the 19th. 23rd, the 5th, office closed for Christmas. 26th, day after Christmas, we're going to celebrate communion and what Jesus done for us after it earned the morning service. Uh, angel trees were due today. Hope everybody brought that back. Once again, we'd like to thank Scott and Amberly for the children's Christmas program they presented and, and a good job they did and going to the nursing home with them. And I heard a lot of comments from ones out there how happy that, that made them also. Uh, prayer list. So continue to remember the ones that's taking treatments and sick and shut in. Remember that. So we need to add to our bereaved list, Donald Robertson family, Kenny Allen family, to our bereaved, add Ivalee Thrift to our special prayer. She fell and hit her head and had to have some stitches in it. Uh, Ruth Mary Strickland, special prayer, and Amanda Page. Uh, she's actually got to have some colon surgery. Add her to your prayer list. Uh, Pete, your daddy still in the hospital? Okay. He still got fluid on his lungs. They're still trying to solve that problem. Down at out of Waycross, right? Dana Brown's out of Waycross Hospital, so take her out. Henry Hodges is out.
Yeah, I believe for you. Yeah, yeah. The one I just added. Uh, we just heard a lif little different story, and we heard a story we heard then. She didn't fall out of the attic. Kids were in the attic getting Christmas stuff, and but she fell and hit her head on a brick somehow, and she had to have stitches in her head. Uh, anybody else we need to add or take off our prayer list at this time? Scott Wally. Scott Wally. A-B-L-L-I-N-G. What's your first name again? Scott. Scott, Scott Wally. Scott Wall and Hernan Surger. Remember him? Peyton. Peyton. Wilbur. Okay. Peyton Wil Wilbur or Wilburn? Wilburn. Yeah. Wilburn. Okay. What else? Okay. Andy, do you have one back? And it went well. Ruth Lee's heart surgery went well. well thank, thank as always for the prayers. Again, always remember, but Christmas is getting closer. Remember the reason for the season, Jesus Christ. Uh, Justin, how about lifting these up for us? Thank you. All right. We hadn't we hadn't talked about this, and it's going to be the first time I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, Christmas Day is on Saturday, and Christmas, the day after Christmas is Sunday morning. We're going to have communion, um, kind of filling out what the pleasure of the church about having church that night. I'm here either way, so... If you guys ain't coming, then I won't come. But if y'all coming, I'll be here. Everybody, anybody plan on being here? Me and Daniel's going to be here. So we're going to have church the 26th. How about that? If it gets any further down the road there, we'll let you know whether we will or, will or will not have it. But anyway, so right now we just get kind of tempted. Y'all feel me in on what's going on? Because I know you got family and stuff like that. But what an opportunity to bring them here that morning. We're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, great opportunity. Stand with me now. We're going to sing a few Christmas songs. Picked out by our pianist, and she's going to play it really pretty. So y'all sing it really pretty, too.
offertory hymn, page 103, if you want to turn in the blue book, Away in a Manger.
Amen. Before that famous group from uh, Buffalo Creek Road gives us a special, stand with me. We're going to sing page 86, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. I believe I remember talking about that this morning.
This is all my hope and peace Nothing but the blood of Jesus And this is all my righteousness Nothing but the blood of Jesus And oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow Well, good afternoon to everyone. If you have your Bible, we're in the book of Luke again tonight. Christ is born. And there were certain things that they do today that they did back then. Eight days later, circumcision came to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to read that. Uh, if you found Luke 2, uh, look all the way down to verse 21. When you found that, stand with me. We'll read a portion of God's Word. Uh, more maybe fact-filled than, uh, than preaching tonight. A little bit of preaching, a little bit of fact feeling. How about that? All right, here we go. Verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished, he says, for the circumcision of the child, he says, his name was called Jesus. They didn't give the name right away, even John, uh, until that point. I guess they was waiting on him to survive or come to take on that name, the Jewish name that they would be giving him, his name Jesus. So his actual name was given, Jesus, which was which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Remember he told uh, Mary what was going to happen? He says, And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The Lord presented himself to the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, tonight that that birth did happen. And God, it was just as it was foretold. God, and everything up to that point, God, was fulfilled. And even up to this day, God, everything has been accordingly. We thank you for that, Father. Go with us tonight. Help us understand thy word. As we read and, and see some of the ways that the women had to do and what Mary also done, she was no exception to the rule except that she bore the Christ child. God, we thank you. We love you for that. Help us all tonight. And all God's people said... Amen. We'll look there and eight days was accomplished. Uh, one thing, there was a purification uh, time limit uh, on women in those days. That time limit was for a certain portion of their, uh, let me say, their time out from being pregnant uh, was seven days. So on the eighth day, she was able to carry him and have him circumcised and present him to the Lord, just as the Bible said. But I don't know how many is aware of that purification, but uh, in, the book of, in the book of Leviticus, I want to read uh, the things that the women had to go through back then. Uh, it was When I was looking up references and came across this, I said, man, uh, that was pretty intense. Uh, but just listen to me. If you want to look with me, it's Leviticus chapter 12, but it says this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, He says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and is born a man child, then shall she be unclean seven days. That word interpreted there out of the Hebrew it means unfit. Unfit to be around people. Uh, not only that, people unfit to be around her at that particular time. I remember when my mom uh, had her children, uh, the, the, the grannies would all come around there and she wasn't supposed to pick up hardly a spoon. And now they can hit them out and go back. Just I mean, it's, it's something else, but this is the way they'd done it in those days. But according to the law, it was part of the law. She was unclean for seven days according to the, the days of her separation 
for her infirmity shall she be unclean. In verse 3, And in the eighth day the flesh of the foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purification three and thirty days. She, she shall touch no hollow thing, nor come in, into the sanctuary until the days of her purification be fulfilled. Thirty-three days now. And it says, and when the days of her purification was fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering uh, and young pigeons and two turtle doves for a sin offering. You think about that. It was kind of expensive, just like it is today, to have kids. But not only that, her time away. It says, this is the law uh, for her that hath born a male or a female. And if she be able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring forth, bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, uh, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. You know, it was amazing. It was almost like she had sinned, didn't it? Almost like that uh, having, a, having a kid was a, a sinful thing. Uh, it was uh, to... To help her be the person she ought to be, she needed to be perfectly clean and everything straight with her and the Lord. I believe that a woman knew those things in those days. Uh, unlike now, uh, it was, I would call it accountability. Accountability. It was her accountability to God. And we don't have that today. We don't have that women are accountable. The Bible tells us, even in the New Testament, to train up a child in the way it should go. When he gets old, he shall not depart from it. That's accountability, and that's the things that we should do. And, uh, but it, it was a long uh, process in those days. Of course, every child basically was born naturally, uh, you know, so they, uh, you know, as the cave women would have it, they took a dinosaur bone, put it in their teeth and bit it and spit them out and went on their way. But uh, nevertheless, they had this time of purification. Uh, basically, they set her aside back to her normal minstrel would be back in cycle. If you'll notice in, in, of today, notice back in then, in other words, she would be back whole again at the end of all these uh, purification processes. The Lord was looking out for these ladies, uh, uh, you know, making sure that uh, everything uh, they were taking care of. Listen, he even said how it would be for women to bear children when sin came into this world. It would be a painful process. Not only that, it's kind of an ugly process, uh, you know, if you've ever witnessed that, which... Uh, I don't really encourage it, but maybe you need to, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, we didn't make a movie about ours like some people do. Uh, matter of fact, the movie would have been on me there for a little bit if I'd have had fainted in the floor, which is, I know I was pretty pale. But anyway, I just thought you should know that. That was the, when it talks about being unfit, unclean, the process in which they did. And they did these things to a T, and they brought burnt offerings. Now, these were faithful people, but they also had a place setting for ones that didn't have as much. They could bring a lesser uh, offering or one that they could afford. Let me say that, not a lesser offering, because the offering didn't matter what the offering was. The offering came from the heart, you know, and, and God knew everything about them. So uh, that little bit that it talks about right there has a whole lot to talk about in Leviticus about what ladies uh, went through in those days. In verse 22, it says, And when the days of her purification according to the laws were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to be presented to the Lord. And as it was written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So uh, that was just portions of the law written here in Matthew. I wanted you to get the full load of what the law had to say uh, when, when they were there. But Jesus, did be, even though he was an exception to the rule, they did not treat him as an exception. He done everything that the mortal man would have to do, although he was mortal and immortal all at the same time. Uh, his father and mother carried it out to the T. You know, uh, it's just what Pilate says, we can find no fault in him. Not even through his parents. Isn't that wonderful? Sometimes today you find uh, some, some kids that kind of get wayside. You might can go to the home and find the reason why it may be that way. 
uh, you know, that's sad. But here we know the slate was clean. They'd done everything. They paid their taxes. We know they did that. And we know that she'd uh, fulfilled her purification. She was the perfect mom, if you would, at, at, in this aspect. God knew. God wants to use people that go by the letter of the law, to by the, by the uh, letter of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it says... I don't know, we're going to talk about two people tonight that come encounter with them. You know, we know that the, the wise men see him. We know that the shepherds saw him, but there's two other people. There's going to be a lady and there's going to be a, a man here that's going to see him and uh, how joyful occasion that is. And I want to share that with you because they laid eyes on him. Not only just to see him, some other people saw him passing by, but these really took a good look. And it says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting uh, for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. What was the consolation of Israel? The Christ child. He was the consolation. He was the gift. He was the one coming. You know, and uh, Simeon there worked, and uh, he was dedicated to the Lord. It describes him here as being a devout man, a just man, a man upright. You know, just more or uh, less just the common Joe, except for his walk and his belief. He was looking for the Messiah, and he was promised by God that he would not die till he saw him. And man, what a blessing it is. So we see the picture there. There he is, uh, and he said that the, the babe that he'll see, and, and uh, this man that we'll see that saw the baby was full of the Holy Ghost. Not mentioned very much prior to the disciples receiving the Holy Ghost, but John the Baptist was, and a few more was, and the disciples was before Jesus left. And then on the day of Pentecost, we all got entertained with that and got uh, living with us, even now upon salvation that happens in our life. And it says in 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Lord's Christ. You think about it. To see the, the, the Christ child. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the, when the parents brought him in... In the children, the child cries uh, to do for him after the custom of the law. Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Don't you see this? Excitement filled his eyes. Did anybody have to tell him that's who it was? No, he was waiting on him. He was waiting on him, just like neither one of us will be surprised if the trumpet sounds and we go to be with him. We won't guess if this is the right way or not. We'll know it's the way because of him. It's just like when the demons cried out of the, uh, the, the lunatic that there that was full of demons. They spoke out in him, but they knew he was. They recognized who he was. Listen, I've never seen him face to face, but I felt him in the spirit enough and to know how real it is. But what a day that will be when with Jesus we shall see, when we look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. What an exciting moment. This man was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was led to the temple that day. Whether it was his time to be there, whether it was his time to work or whatever, the Bible says he was led there by the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that things happen, that you're led there? Maybe unbeknownst to you what may happen when you get there, I do beyond a shadow of a doubt. I believe that every time people are gathered together, it's a divine appointment for you to be there. If not, God would have saw fit to not have made a way for you to be here. Now, there's a lot of people made a way not to be here, but God makes a way. If you want it and God wants it, it'll be there. Or just if God wants it, you'll be there. Let me say it like that. So it'll happen. It says, but then he took him up in his arms. Could you imagine? This is the only time we know that anybody picked this child up prior uh, uh, since uh, he was born. Now, Joseph may have. Mary, uh, of course, she did. Uh, she was feeding him. Of course, they did. But this is the only one. Eight days, you know. I don't know if Joseph picked him up or even touched him in those days. But the first time that someone cradled the Christ child was a man named Simeon. And they, guess where they was at? It was down at the church. They was down at the church. He said in the, verse 29, he said, Lord, he said, now let us thou servant depart in peace according to thy word. He said, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Now, he didn't say he's seen your offspring, seen the seed of uh, the root of David. Hadn't seen all that. Salvation. He knew what Jesus represented. His salvation, the saving knowledge, the, the being uh, born again, all the words you would say. He says, for I have seen you're saving your, your nation and saving their people from their sins. I have seen 
the salvation. Man, you know, uh, it's, it's a mystery uh, how that these people maybe heard of salvation. Uh, you know, John Pete's repentance for uh, Jesus is coming. He said, repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus Christ says, repent, be baptized. You know, because he was the one that saved you from your sins. And this man holding this baby, he looked at him. He says, if you want to know the truth, here he is. This is salvation to all those who need uh, being born again, which they all needed to be uh, born again. This is him. He recognized him for that. I, he says, my eyes have seen die. Talking to, the, talking to uh, the children of Israel, he says, thy salvation. He says, which thou hast prepared uh, before the face of all people. You know, uh, this, wasn't, uh, this wasn't a surprise event as some gathered at Christmas was. Some would like to say it just kind of happened and that's what we... No, no, no. And that's what he's referring to here. It was prepared. This was a prepared thing. It was not something that, you know, it's kind of like uh, when you got company coming over, you prepare for that that's going to come. Well, he had been prepared been preparing the world for this and foretelling it was going to happen. Now, he didn't put a, 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 a time stamp on when that would happen, nor will he put a time stamp on it when he'll come back. But have faith, my child, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And here we see that he says that thou hast prepared before the face of all people, he says, a light to lighten the, the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Now, I want to share that with you, how important that is. It was a light for those who didn't have a chance, didn't have the blood, didn't have the being a Jew, didn't have all that. He was the light that broke that. He was the salvation of light. He, he lighted that up for them. And notice, notice what he says about his own people. He says, and the glory of the people Israel. He was the glory. He was the glory of the people. He was the one that, that they should have been looking for and willing to accept him because it had been told for years that he was coming, and now he is, and Simeon is telling the news right here in the church house. I, I wish somebody in that place would have said, Amen, preach it, Brother Simeon. That's him. That's him. I agree with you, brother. He has come down from the, the portals of glory. He has visited us with us here uh, in the swaddling clothes. We know this is him. Uh, just laying our eyes on him and feeling the presence of God, and it should be the glory. You know, instead of the Jews fighting back, they ought to have the biggest feast they ever had in their day and time. Right there, she ought to have a, um, a baby shower of all baby showers, but what they were shower, showered with, with hate was hate. A disgruntlement, dislike, saying that this was this could not be true. This is not right. He would have come in a different way. We'd have known for sure that it was him. But see, he elected for people to use faith. It's by faith through grace that you be saved. Those that believe in him would believe that he is who he says he is. And uh, and Simeon was uh, let telling the news. And it says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at the things which were spoken of him. Could you imagine? Maybe in their quiet time. Because we know the Bible says that Mary kept all those things to herself. You know, I bet you could tell you some cute stories about him. Maybe she can tell you some encounters where the Heavenly Father may have beamed down a couple of times just to put his hands on. I don't know. But when you think about that, but if, if Mary and Joseph um, marveled at the things that he said, you know what, I think Mary would kind of sit up and say, so Joseph, I told you he was special. I told you that somebody would recognize him. I told you that one day somebody would know that our son came from the portals of glory. And I can tell the world I never knew a man that I was conceived of the Holy Ghost. You can tell that this man knows about God and God sent him to, to do what he did just by what he says and how he said. Couldn't you imagine when someone answers the right que the answers to the question or asks the right question, you kind of rise up in your heart. You kind of know that it is, and she was so proud. I just see her, and they marveled at him, and oh, maybe she just looked at old Joseph and said, that's right, that's him. That's exactly right. That is who he is, and he knows it. And the only way he knows it is because God told him. That's what it was, because he is full of the Holy Spirit of God. And it says here, 
uh, in verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, he says, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. He says, For a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many's hearts may be revealed. I, 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 I pondered on that last little bit. You know what he was telling her? I think he understand it through and through. I think he knew that he would come and the way he would come, and he, he had revealed that, and he had called out exactly who he was. But also he was recognizing that he would die on the cross too because when he refers to that her heart would be pierced like unto a sword, that would be an awful time to see your child, you know, to be crucified on the cross and be stripped naked as a man, held up there and beaten uh, so unmercifully and wearing a crown of thorns and making fun of the, all the people. What does people do when, uh, when a child messes up? Let's just say one cuts up. Just say tadpole messes up. You don't know who tadpole is. Somebody didn't this morning. That's my grandson, Garrison. Uh, tadpole, uh, really, they didn't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, tadpole messes up. First thing you're going to do, you're going to look at him, and then you're going to look and see what mom and dad's doing, right? That's what we do. That's what we do. Same thing I think you see here. He, and he's letting her know. He says, you, you know, the whole world, you, 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 and it's going to annoy it, and your heart's going to be pierced with a sword. So there's going to be all this glory and all this. You reckon Mary cried at the cross? Why, sure she did. Why, sure she did. But you know what kept her going? She didn't run off and go to the mental institution or kill herself or anything about her son being born, uh, being killed. She didn't do all those things. I, I believe she kind of got in the corner. She says, I can't wait to see you again. I just can't wait to see you again. I know I'm going to see you. You know, just let me know when it's my time. You know, we don't even have a recorded time that when J uh, uh, Mary and Joseph died. But rest assured. Uh, they were carried away from here in the presence of God, to the presence of God by the angels. And what a day that would be. He says, but he says that the thoughts of many's hearts may be revealed. And, and, and that latter part, I'm going to tell you, she said, you, he says, Mary, you're going to be surprised at some of these religious people, the real thoughts of how they feel about your son. They're going to be revealed in that day. They, some of them that should, uh, the head leaders of the church is going to turn against him. They, the ones that had him arrested. They, the ones, them. I believe that's what it is going to cut her to the heart. The very church that she, uh, that she, she believed where God was, and God was there. But there was some sinful hearts of people there also, and they got in, uh, into authority, and they got into uh, uh, messing with God's stuff. And here he says, I believe that that's going to be revealed into you, and you're going to see that. Boy, wouldn't that make you so mad? Wouldn't that make you so mad for that to happen? Now another one. Here's a lady uh, like in the Simeon. She also worked in the temple. The Bible refers to her as a prophetess. Uh, but uh, I'll explain that in just a minute. It says, And when there was one Anna, a prophetess of the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Anser. He says, She was of great age and had, had lived with an husband 70 years from her virginity. Now she was a married woman. And she lived with this man a long, long, long time. Notice here. It says, and she was a widow uh, of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Let me explain what happened here. Her husband played a great part also in, in that work there, and she was working alongside of him. Not only that, well, among everything else, what was her job? Well, the Bible says she continued in doing what she'd done. She continued in fasting and praying. She was a prayer warrior, okay? She, she done everything. Don't you think that they, they used ladies and all and those things in those days back then? Absolutely they did. She was doing her part, and she was faithful unto God. But that didn't make her a preacher. That didn't make her one of those people. She was just a faithful believer. And she was well dedicated. And she was well remembered. Her name is penned in the word of God. She was a prophetess. She was the, the wife of a prophet. She was a wife of, uh, of a priest. And she was doing the duties there in there. What a happy time that would be. I mean, I've seen churches where uh, the preacher's uh, wife would be the pianist, Sunday school teacher, and uh, WMU director. You know, I've, I've seen it all. She, they didn't make her the preacher, but she was a prayer warrior. You know, she done those things. And that, this is this lady. Now notice here. It says, 
And she coming in, to, in that instance gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. What did she do? Well, what did she do? Listen, uh, as Simeon was playing the part of, of the priest here, as he was uh, presenting him to the Lord and, uh, and doing the things that the priest would do, she come in and she put her two cents away and she says, oh, yeah. She says, he's telling you the truth. You know, some people like that. You know, in the old primitive Baptist churches, the men would sit up front and the ladies would sit in the back. And sometimes they wouldn't hear or understand what was going on, so they'd have to ask one another or ask their husbands later on what was said and what was meant by those things. Well, all she was doing is reiterating what Simeon had said. She said, oh, yes, that's him. That's the Lord. That's salvation. She reused the same words as she was telling all the people. Maybe they were going out and says, what is she talking about? Anna, would you tell us what she, oh, yeah, oh, oh what this is, that's the Christ child. That's the one that, uh, he, you know, his mother Mary, she never knew a guy. You know, it was told about that. And we believe she was the chosen one. And there's, there's, there's Joseph. That's the one that's going to raise him. Oh, yeah, he's the one. And there's the seed of David. And he's going to be the king of the world. He's going to be the king of the world. He, 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 he's going to save us all from our sins. Could you imagine how excited she could be? You say, well, somebody says she was preaching. No, she was full of the Holy Ghost of God. And she was proud to announce that her Savior lived. And there he was. Two people. Now, it don't say that she handled him. But it says that she saw him. You know, maybe that was a reward for her service and what she done for years. Many years after her husband died, she still was faithful to the call. She was still faithful to doing her work, praying and fasting. Now, I'll tell you what, if you don't think you can do anything else in the house of God, you can pray and fast and seek God's face, and you can make a difference in this life. You know what we need? We need some of that, but we need people to put a lot of feet on the prayers too. We need those kind of people, the ones that can go. We need the ones that can pray for those that one can go and pray and go. How about that? But, but you see the recognition that you got. And it will not go unheard. It will not go untold. When we do those things, the Bible says that God will reward those that love him. He loves us and he'll reward us that do that. But I didn't know if you knew about that. Two, three things. This man, Simeon, we don't hear about him much, but we heard about him one time. Maybe the first guy that ever outside the family or outside of the husband and wife. No one got around her before this point because she was in the impurificated state. But Simeon got in hold of her. How was he allowed to do that? Well, not only was the office that he held, but not only that, I believe that they could feel the presence of God all around him. It's almost like hooking two electrical cords together and both of them being live. He got, he got plugged in and he was already electrified. And boy, could you imagine that? Do you think for a moment he was holding that thing tight? Oh, look at him. Oh, I bet he cried. You know, I bet the, 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 not just the, 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 it being a baby, but it being the Christ child. The one that, because he knew, he said, oh, yeah. And, and Anna knew, oh, yeah, that he's the one that's going to die. Oh, yeah, but boy, ain't he precious now. Oh, he's so lovely. He's so darling. Man, and she praised God for that. You know, we ought to praise him too that it happened. That's what Christmas is about. It's a celebration. Yes, we eat a lot and we give a lot of gifts and some of them get in debt and this and that and the other. But don't miss the mark. It's not us. It's for him. It's for him. If you want to give back to him, be a nana. If you want to do what you're supposed to do and, and walk with God, be a Simeon. Be full of the Holy Ghost of God and he can use you and he can make a difference. Not only that, Whatever they done, I believe he scattered it all over the country. Could you imagine the next few times that Simeon got to talk to, to, to some of the high ups in the church? says, oh, yes, it is true. I know you Jews might not want to believe this, but it's true. I saw him. Well, are you sure? How did you recognize him? All that? She, he said, no, I held him. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, the, my feet just shook with the power that was uh, upon him when I took him in my arms. He is that blessed, even as a child. Even so much that even John the Baptist, when he entered into the same room with him, leapt in his mama's womb. It's the same thing he can do tonight if he's dealing with your heart. He can change your life forever. He can make you leap to your feet, go to your, fall down on your knees, and ask him to come into your heart and save him. For he is salvation for those who don't know him. Trust him tonight if you would. Let's pray together. Father, God, we thank you for your blessed word. We thank you for the Christmas story. But, God, I want to thank you for those soldiers that uh, 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 of the way, like Simeon and Anna. I, I thank you, God, for them. I, I'm glad they're in the book. 
God, that could be us. We could do those things. And God, you don't take it lightly. God, you reward those. And we thank you so much. But again, we thank you for the Christ child. We know that this, this season is his. It's all about him. It's not about none of the stores. It ain't all about all the fancy, shiny gifts. It's all about the loving Savior. The one that came preparing to die from the moment he came. God, we thank you so much. I'm glad he did it so that I could be made free. Help us make the right decision tonight in this invitation hymn. Let the Spirit move as you would have it to do freely upon each pew. In Jesus' precious name, amen. or non-spiritually but in a forward motion you cannot be defeated you must press forward I pray you uh, have a great week uh, I'll see you Wednesday night if I don't and Merry Christmas I plan to see everybody here Wednesday night that can be here uh, but tonight we have a business meeting we, we it is about the budget and well, I, I ask you to stay if you can uh, not that you got to understand it all but your voice can be heard if you have a question okay so I'm going to ask God's blessing to, as we leave this place and for the message and uh, to be with us in the business meeting. So y'all pray with me. Father, in your sweet name we come tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for being so good to each one of us that you loved us to death on the cross. And God, I pray tonight as we conduct business here in this church, it's not ours. God, I pray, Lord, you've given us the wisdom, Lord, to direct our paths and do the things that we need to do. God, we admit already we're not perfect, but God, we're under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and you're there to set us astray, set us right that have been astray. God, go with us now. We ask your blessing upon us. And all God's people said, Amen.